Anyone expecting the HTC Columbia team to retain their sprinting dominance in the 2010 edition of the Tour hadn't reckoned on a resurgent Alessandro Pataki. It was the final sprint on stage four that left Mark Cavendish looking bereft of ideas and energy as Pataki stormed to the line. For Cavendish, the opportunity to silence the doubters would come soon enough. The relief the Briton showed on the podium demonstrated just how much being back up there meant to him. Among the sprinting thoroughbreds, winning breeds confidence that saw Cavendish take back-to-back -back stages. Lance Armstrong had returned for another year. He was no longer with Astana, instead he was team leader of Radio Shack with no Alberto Contador to complicate the issue. Early on, the biggest threat to Armstrong in 2010 was bad luck. It sometimes seemed that if there was a crash, then Armstrong was in it. Sometimes more than once in a stage. After the previous year's second place, Andy Schleck was not surprisingly a favourite for this year's tour. Armstrong was already looking battered and bruised. Australian Cadell Evans, so close to the title of tour winner on several occasions, was in yellow. Many observers were asking whether this might be his year at last. Inevitably though, Schleck and Contador were hovering in attendance. Their private battle would have dire consequences for Cadell Evans. He was dropped on stage 9 to Saint-Jean-de-Maurienne by the duelling Schleck and Contador. Not only dropped, but apparently broken too. A crash on stage eight had sapped his strength and confidence, and after only one day in yellow, Cadell Evans was already admitting to his team and the press that his tour was as good as over. Andy Schleck was now in yellow. Controversy was about to hit the peloton, literally. Cavendish's lead-out man in the HTC Columbia team, Mark Renshaw, was judged to be a little too over-eager in trying to open up a path for his teammate to the finishing line. Renshaw was thrown off the tour for this headbutting incident. Cavendish, though, kept the stage win. Observers wondered, however, if the Columbia juggernaut would keep rolling without the tough Aussie lead-out man. The king of the Astana team, Alberto Contador, had the yellow jersey on Andy Schleck's back in his sights. His own eagerness to wrest it from the Luxembourger led to more controversy. There were no headbutts this time, but instead a contravention of one of the unwritten rules of cycling. Don't take advantage of a rival when something happens to him on the road that is beyond his control. When Andy Schleck's chain came off on stage 15 to Bagnier de Luchon and got wedged between the crank and the bottom bracket, Contador chose to accelerate off into the distance. There's nothing in the rule book to say that he shouldn't, but tour etiquette is passed down by example, not by statutes, and many believe that Contador didn't act in the spirit of cycling. Contador was lucky too that he had Samuel Sanchez with him and Denny Menchov, who also wanted to put time into Schleck. Whatever the rights or wrongs, this brief episode would be crucial to the final destination of the Mayo Jaune.
Andy Schleck made a brave attempt to make up the gap with some aggressive climbing as well as some fearless descending. It would be to no avail. Contador had begun the stage 31 seconds behind Schleck. He finished it eight seconds up. There was no doubting how Schleck felt at the end of the stage. He'd lost his grip on the yellow jersey. Contador now had an eight second lead in the general classification. The tour is not finished for me, you know, I'm, I'm angry. You're in the mood to attack. I, I'm angry today, you know, and I, I will take my revenge on, uh, on Tomale, that I, you can't come back. Schleck's only realistic chance of reclaiming yellow was to somehow drop Contador on the Tourmalé or hope that maybe the Spaniard would blow up in the final time trial. The Tourmalé was his first challenge and once again with these two riders it was wheel to wheel. Every time Schleck accelerated, Contador was like a limpet on his back wheel. It was just like the Ventoux a year before. Schleck may have won on the Tourmalet, but he took not one second out of Contador's eight-second advantage. Back on the plains, Mark Cavendish was indicating what he required from his teammates if he was to achieve another stage win. The breakaway was reeled in with heartbreaking precision by the peloton. Once again, with just a bite length between them, Cavendish took the stage from Pataki. Contador's final hurdle would be the individual time trial. Not one of his favourite disciplines, the reigning champion still did enough to keep Andy Schleck at bay. Yellow jersey was once again Contador's to keep. The now three times Tour de France champion could enjoy the traditional glass of champagne on his victory lap of Paris. But others still had racing on their mind. You know who was right up there in the mix once again. Like a cannonball, Cavendish simply destroyed the rest of the field on the run-in, claiming a fifth stage victory in the race and 15 overall from four starts. It had been a memorable tour. Contador hadn't won a stage, but became the ninth rider to have won the event three times. While one multiple winner of the tour took the plaudits from his teammates, another bade farewell. There was no podium finish for Armstrong this time, but in the midst of his Radio Shack teammates, he said goodbye to them, the crowd, and to the tour itself. This time, for the last time. The final winning margin was just 39 seconds. At the time of writing and having been cleared by the Spanish cycling authorities, Contador now waits for a ruling from the UCI, cycling's governing body, on testing positive for a banned substance, clenbuterol, during the 2010 tour. He protests his innocence, but the final destination of that yellow jersey may yet be decided not on the road, but in court.